so in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create this beautiful matte silver mono Lightroom preset. It's really really simple, really really quick and it will give your images a really really nice finish. So I'm going to reset this and show you how I did it. Okay so first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring the exposure up just a little bit around there and I'm going to bring the contrast up because I personally like really really nice contrasting images so about 55 I'm pushing mine up to. I'm going to come down and bring the shadows down to 100 minus 100 and I'm going to bring the blacks down as well to around minus 75 that's pretty good to start with there. Now what you'll notice on this is that I haven't actually just gone up to the black and white setting up here I'm going to keep this as a color image so that I can uh, use the HSL panel later on. Um, okay, so clarity. I'm just going to bring the clarity down a little bit to around minus 10. And there we go. That's always good for skin. And I'm going to push the dehaze all the way up to 100. This is what's going to give us a real unique edit. Okay. So the tone curve, I'm going to just make a selection in the middle to start and another selection around there. I'm going to come to the bottom. I'm just going to bring the blacks up. Now this is what's going to give us that matte effect in the black areas, okay? So I'm just going to make sure that's a little bit of a spoover transition along there. I'm just going to bring this down a little bit as well, just so the greys and blacks start getting a little bit darker. There we go. So that's going to give us our matte effect. And if you ever want to matte the whites off, you can do the same at the top here. Just bring that down, okay? Right, so moving on to the HSL panel, so the hue, saturation and luminance. So this is um, where I'm, the majority of the work is done is in here. And uh, I prefer to do black and whites this way rather than convert them to black and white. Because if you do, if you just convert them to black and white, then you only get the black and white mix. Okay. So by doing it this way, you still get to keep the luminance, saturation and hue, which we can use to our advantage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the saturation. I'm just going to bring every single color down to minus 100. And if you ever want to do a color pop, that's how you do it. You can just leave certain colors up and uh, that's what you'll get, okay? So minus 100, now we can actually play around with this, the hue and the luminance. So I'm just gonna bring the orange down a little bit to around 45. Um, the yellow as well, I'm just going to, I don't think there's much yellow in there, but it's going to bring that down anyway because um, some images will have lots of yellow in and you want to take that out minus 100 so it's more in the orange spectrum, okay, just for skin tones. And same with the blue as well, so I think around 45 I think is good. That's good, so that gives us a, a good starting point. Now to come on to the luminance, which is where uh, we can now just bring the brightness of these shades down and you'll see what I mean when I when I start bringing them down. So you can see the, the red here is starting to affect them lips, you can see. So just bring that down to minus 56. 55 around there. Uh, the same with the orange as well and you'll see that the orange plays a big, big part in this edit because it's, this, it's the color of the most um, the most skin tone is, is going to be in the orange and yellow spectrum. So that's why it's it's uh, quite an important one to tweak. Now, depending on your image and the skin tone of the person, you may want to go past the sort of low 50s that I'm at. Okay. Um, and the yellow as well is going to play a big role. You can see there what that's going to do. So all I'm going to do on this is just bring it down to around, yeah, about there, minus 14, because... Um, any darker and then the skin skin tones are just going to go too dark really and then just green because there's a bit of green in that background I just want to darken it really so there we go minus 16 so that's looking pretty good and uh, we're nearly done with it actually so you can always add some color into the shadows the midtones and the highlights so play around with these because you can get some really really nice effects um, you can leave it at this stage if you want to but do have a play um, I always try and stick to the sort of cinematic rule of the, the blue and yellow orange spectrums as opposites um, 
because uh, that that works um, pretty well. So let's try a hue of around there, and uh, let's just bring the saturation up to. Let's just try it around, say, saturation of about five. So it's just a real, real hint of color, nothing major going on there. So I think that's quite nice there. Let's go to the highlights and so let's come up into this sort of yellow spectrum up there and again I'm going to have a hue of around five at five at the most I would say because it's just a hint of color you don't want it to um, start overbearing your your image so about there that's pretty good and also you can play with the blending as well because you'll see that it will it will give uh, a different a different effect so we're blending more into into these sort of yellow green hues up here um, and if we come that way you can actually see there's a slight sort of blue tinge to it so yeah let's just uh, do that and just I think saturation around four actually is probably going to work better just so it's not as not as powerful there we go so you can see what what that does it's very minimal but it, it certainly does give some color back into the image so we've got a very almost a green a green tone to this okay and then highlights so it looks it looks pretty good so let's come down and let's sharpen it a little bit I'm just going to push this up to around 10 so it's just a little bit a radius of about 1.45 pixels that's pretty good and let's keep the detail at 50 and uh, let's just mask this off a bit as well again holding the option alt key down we can kind of select where we want the areas to be sharp so the white areas are the areas that will be sharp and the blacks won't be sharpened so let's push that up a little bit because it's quite a quite a dark image anyway um, let's add some noise reduction because we've done quite a bit to it so let's push that up to around 10 and um, leave the detail at 50 contrast you can put that up to around 10 again depending on your image um, and let's just add a little bit of noise reduction in the color because we did add a little bit of color and it is still technically a color image okay so that is it that's all you have to do so if we come back up to the top you can see that now what we can do is is we can come back in here and we can start manipulating and doing small adjustments just by eye so I tend to do that come back in and see okay these highlights could probably come down a little bit so let's just tweak them down that's pretty good um, these whites so we could maybe just bring them down a little bit there and then let's have a look at these blacks could they come down or could they go back up so it's really important that you come back and just tweak these and take your time with it but the actual first run through is a pretty good run through of, of how to create this lovely sort of matte effect and uh, like I said earlier if you want to you can raise this up a little bit more so raise that bottom end up and that's what's going to give you that matte effect so it's, it's almost like a silver matte so I reckon it's about there so if we look at the before and after so we can come down to here or we can press the Y key that's our before and after and it is a very very unique lightroom edit so it's a it's a beautiful beautiful edit i really really like this 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 type of black and white um it, it's very um very much going back to the analog days and i think that's what's important when you're doing lightroom edits is trying to keep them as uh, as realistic as possible you could as well if you want to you could add some grain that would definitely bind the whole image together all the different adjustments that we've made um, grain is a great way of kind of binding all them together and uh, you can go sort of roughly roughly 40 35 I would go and um, to keep the roughness down to about 30 there you go so that's a great way of just like I said just binding all them all that edit together and giving it something to hold on to so you've got two different ways of doing it there you can have a smooth or you can have a, a, a grain effect, so to speak. So I hope you've enjoyed that, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.